I'm going to use the podium because I made some notes so I could stick to this five minute time frame. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm with Blue Planet. Uh, Blue Planet's business is focused on uh, concrete, basically, and in particular on uh, using uh, carbon or captured CO2 to make rock and specifically limestone to go into concrete. Um, and, you know, some of you probably know this, but uh, aggregate or rock uh, comprises roughly 80% of what we put into a yard of concrete. And so for us, it's an exciting opportunity because uh, every, every year, uh, you know, the concrete market acts as a big sink. And if we can put the rock into the concrete market, we're putting a lot of carbon into, into the sink. And every year it's renewable. And, and you know, we dig out something like... Uh, 55 gigatons of rock every year to satisfy those needs. So we see it as a long-term opportunity for con uh, carbon storage. Um, we uh, recently set up a company. So where are we in the development stages? We've recently set up a company called San Francisco Bay Aggregates. And uh, we're developing there our first commercial plant to, uh, to demonstrate larger scale uh, commercial operations with first production plan for early next year. So we've been at it for a few years and uh, we think that we're about at that point, if you remember the picture with the duck about to fly off the wood earlier today, I think we're, we feel we're right about at that point. Uh, let's see here. There's some extra slides in here for you to put yourself to sleep later if you have insomnia. Um, and so I'll just skip over those and I'll stop here. So this will, I'll tell you, tell you a little bit about how this works. So Blue Planet uses CO2 as raw material uh, for making carbonate rocks to replace natural limestone rock. And the principal component is a, a principal component of the concrete. And we basically capture CO2 from flue gas, from say coal-fired power, gas-fired power, cement, uh, divert that stream into our process. And uh, the gas is converted to carbon by contacting it with uh, uh, contacting CO2 containing um, gas with a water-based capture solution. So you can see it's sort of a closed loop once you get it going. We introduce the geomass that we need, which is the calcium and the alkalinity, to create the actual product. And what's interesting is that it sort of differentiates what we're doing from, from a lot of CO2 capture methods because the captured CO2 does not require a purification step. So, uh, you know, the, cap, the energy and capital required to purify uh, the CO2 is, is eliminated in our process. And so, you know, our capture and utilization method is a, a relatively low cost one. Uh, and our business model is based upon the sale of the rock. So we're profitable, driven, our, profits, our profitability is driven by our ability to sell the rock. Um, now, because our aggregate is manufactured, we can produce it in different sizes, produce it to spec, different ranges from sand size uh, uh, to gravel size. And in particular, you know, what some of the low-hanging fruit in our industry is lightweight aggregate, which goes for a premium in the market, for those of you who are in, into concrete and cement. Um, our capture solution is basically exposed to this geomass there you see on the chart. Uh, it's really our, our term for rock waste or industrial waste materials that contain alkalinity. And this combined with the carbon to form the mineral. And so we also mitigate uh, certain industrial wastes in our process. For example, uh, fly ash or cement kiln dust or demolished uh, recycled concrete are all geomasses that we take into that process. So what kind of products do we generate? Well, in terms of products, our technology takes the source, the CO2 source, and the calcium source, uh, like in this example, returned or demolished concrete, which is what we're doing in our first uh, project out in uh, San Francisco Bay. Um, and these are combined to form the, uh, the carbonates, uh, calcium carbonate slurry, basically, sort of like a yogurt-style slurry which in turn is used to create the mineral, right? The, the coarse or the fine aggregates. Um, so what's interesting here is with this particular geomass, and this has become quite popular in our discussions with various metropolitan areas, uh, you know, we generate clean, when we introduce the geomass and run it through a process, 
We also clean up the original aggregate and sand because you know you take off the calcium and all this the Portland cement, right? And so we can then resell those original aggregates and sand as additional uh, 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 products into the into the market. And so that, of course, is interesting because it requires less quarry rock as well. So in short, you know, this process, or the, I guess this gives you the sense, this process, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, mimics what happens in nature, you know, geomimetic mineralization, as they call it. Oops. So, um, so why is this exciting? Well, I think this example helps to explain sort of the potential impact of, of what we think our technology can have in the long run. Here I'm showing you a basic concrete mix design across that top, uh, that top bar, which includes the various components that go into any standard mix design. Uh, the embodied CO2 of 600 pounds per cubic yard in this example is limited just to the CO2 generated uh, by producing the cement that has gone into this mix. So we, we just sort of, for simplicity, just limited to that in this exercise. But uh, so, so in this mix design, you, we've assigned uh, the, the uh, uh, original mix with a carbon star number of 600, and I'll come back to what carbon star is in a second. And as you can see, substituting blue planet aggregate here can drive the carbon content of a yard of concrete beyond carbon neutral to as much as uh, eight, minus 894 pounds if you were to replace all the force and fines in that piece of concrete. So we're taking what was originally a 600 pound plus carbon piece of concrete and turning it to a negative 894. And if you add to that um, the fact that, uh, let's just go forward here, One more. Sorry, I didn't want to stop there. If you add to that the fact that we could capture CO2 out of, uh, out of the cement plant itself, you can take that number down by another 600 in this example. So you would have a piece of concrete that's negative 1,500 pounds as a footprint. Let's see, I get to my last slide here. So carbon, just I mentioned carbon stars. So carbon star is a rating system that, that um, that is, is being used, uh, just starting to be used, and in fact, the Canadian government has uh, uh, agreed to develop it now as a standard for North America, and what it's designed to measure is just how much carbon is going into, into a piece of concrete or a yard of concrete, and we sh they, sh they expect to have it ready to go by Q3 2020 for use across North America. So that's, that's sort of interesting news for us because I think what it does is it levels the playing field and allows different products uh, in this industry to be compared. On a, on, a, on a similar basis. And I'll stop there because I know I'm over that five minutes. Okay.